is it, Agent K? We've been hit. The intelligence files have been compromised. K is the engineer and it's undoubtedly the perpetrator. Surely you can't be serious. What's the damage? Chief, I'm serious, and please don't call me Shirley. It looks like several of our secret protection and power supply files have been stolen, but we should verify the ones that are still here to make sure they're okay. Then put the file into the double secret encryption to Scrambler and let's see what we still have. This is okay. It shows that more than half of our users deploy basic devices to protect their machines from surges and transients without regard for process interruptions. More than a third use uninterruptible power supplies or UPSs to manage power outages and shut down to a safe condition. Now that data makes sense to me. Some of our other intelligence sources show that factory electrical systems frequently experience fl fluctuations in their voltage, harmonic distortions, noise, short and long-term power outages. So for serious power problems, most machine builders need to shut the machine down quickly, and that often means not worrying about the throughput. Well, when they have to, that's where these UPSs come in. And while power protection on the machine might have solely been the user's responsibility a while back, the fact that 88% of our respondents have some sort of power protection philosophy seems to make it pretty clear that responsibility is being shared by the machine builder now. Let's see some more. The file adds that among the respondents using UPS, more than 70% specify online standby devices, most likely because of that need to keep the machines running. While the rest of them stand ready but offline, suggesting that they just need to get back up and running quickly, not immediately. And there's more circuit protection data. It shows that more than half of the respondents employ circuit breakers for overload or short circuit protection, while more than a third use standard fuses and 7% use resettable fuses. That data makes sense too. I know our experts are interested in whether that resettable fuse usage number will go up over time because some of our sources tell us that resettable fuses is becoming an interesting alternative for machine builders who want to get their machines up quickly after a power failure. And as you know, Agent K, those resettable fuses are made of a polymer-based material. It's called a positive temperature coefficient material. It expands as current grows to a point where the crystalline structure actually breaks, opening the circuit. Circuit cools down, the power is restored. It's pretty interesting. And of those that use circuit breakers, 43% use thermal magnetic breakers, 17 use thermal, and 14 use electronic. Sources tell us that many machine builders have great confidence in their thermal magnetic technology, but some believe electronic breakers are an attractive technology in the 24 volt arena. As you probably know, Chief, they offer selective and fairly wide programmable current limits that can be set and monitored remotely. And we hear that they can help minimize nuisance trips. So it appears that it's just the power supply files that are missing. But it's very important that we recover this data before the chaos agents break the encryption codes and distort the data for their own terrible purposes. Agent M already has been dispatched. Luckily, the missing files also have radio frequency identification or RFID transmitters, which should allow him to track and identify the file and recover the data when he gets close enough. Security cameras caught the thief entering the building and we saw the case he was carrying. Agent M will pull the all briefcase switcheroo. He'll call in via go to clandestinemeeting.com when he liberates the file. Chief, I've got the power control files. Let's go over them so we can compare their authenticity. Close to three quarters of the respondents say they require 24 volt output as the DC output power supply in their typical control cabinet, while more than half require a 120 volt input and about 10% each require a 240 volt input or a 280 volt three phase. And I suspect the power supply vendors would agree that half of the inputs at the machine would be 120 volts. And not only that, it's encouraging to see that almost 80% report that they use circuit protection on the 24-volt DC power controls. 
In addition, more than 60% usually require only one per supply, while about 38% require two to four outputs. I'm a little surprised with that finding, Chief. I would have thought, particularly for DIN rail mount supplies, a few more respondents would be providing power to more than one device per supply. Regarding power outputs, the typical requirements, not surprisingly, vary greatly. As you can see, some 26% report that they need 210 to 300 watt output wattage per power supply, and 22% require 101 to 200 watt. No real surprises, so I think we can trust that this particular data is intact. In addition, more than half of the users say their power supply technology is switched mode while more than a quarter use linear. That makes sense, Agent M. I think that's good data. I think it's good to see that our users have a pretty good understanding of the underlying technology they're using. There's clearly a group out there that are still very comfortable with and familiar with linear technology. It's noise-free, it's reliable. But because it's only 50% efficient, unless they need to heat up an enclosure, um, that's quite a disadvantage. Whereas with switching power supplies, which is also reliable, also noise-free, because it's 90 plus percent efficient, you just don't have to worry about overheating the components in an enclosure. Also, we see that close to three quarters say they don't require parallel power supplies for redundancy. Finally, close to two thirds say they specify enclosures with DIN rail, while 18 percent each specify open or modular enclosures. Excellent work. That seems to be all the missing files. Now we can go back to gathering information for our next intelligence report on controldesign.com. By the way, Agent K, what was in the briefcase I switched with my opposite number? He's about to check that file he thinks is real. Just wait. You should hear it in a minute.